Well, for more on the growing popularity of musicals in China, my colleague Sean Caleb spoke to David Saverin. Now, David is a distinguished professor of theater and performance and holds the Vera Mowry Roberts Chair in American Theater at the City University of New York. Well, I know that musicals, um, Western musicals, were first performed in China in the 19, late 1980s. But I think it's really only been the past 10 years that they've sort of taken off. And um, there have been a lot of musicals that were imported, um, American musicals, uh, and also some European ones. And um, the, the Chinese are, have started absorbing these, um, this work, these influences. I think also a lot of Chinese have, are going to, especially the US, for training. Uh, I think this has been enormously important because you know, the singing and dancing is not the same as sort of traditional Chinese. Uh, Chinese opera, for example, singing and dancing. Um, so I think that's been really important. And just sort of the way that Chinese writers have had a chance really to get to know the American canon of musicals. Well, let's talk a bit about China's rich history and its plays, its musicals, its opera. And how do you think that has played into this rise? Well, I mean, Music theater is so important in China. I mean, that's what theater is, music theater. And so I think that in some ways that that has really um, facilitated this rise. I mean, and also um, the, the um, let's say, the universality of American pop music because um, the fact is that musicals basically, I mean, Chinese, the Chinese musicals I've seen basically use a more uh, US European musical style. Um, so all of these things, I think, have, have fueled it. And of course, also just the incredible richness mm. of Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese staging. It's, now, you've been to Shanghai several times, and one yeah. can imagine Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, cities like that really embracing this rise. But what about the more second-tier cities, the smaller cities, if you will? What is it going to take, given your experience, do you think, to pass that interest along to those cities as well? I think that's going to be more of a challenge. I, when I was last in Shanghai, I went to see a wonderful production of The Sound of Music. And we were talking afterwards with one of the um, Chinese actors. And she was talking about the fact that, that this was, in fact, part of a big tour and that they were doing about 20 or 25 cities. So again, we're talking sort of medium-sized cities. And certainly this is one way to spread the news because I think it would, it'll be unlikely for a city of six or seven million. You know, I don't think that they'll be mounting a lot of large scale musicals on their own. One wonderful thing about theater and musicals, it, you talk about it, the traveling aspect of all this. Do you foresee a day when U.S. audiences would pay to see Chinese performers come over here? Well, I really hope so. Um, it, it is going to take a while. Um, and I think that, um, that the Chinese, that the level of performance in China has really improved enormously. Um, but I'm, I'm also familiar with the situation in Korea, and Korea is, I guess, I, the way I think of it sort of has been about 15 years ahead of China. But China is catching up very quickly. And in fact, some Korean actors have performed in New York and on the West End. So um, I think it, it will happen, but it's taking time. Uh, you know, one other interesting thing um, looking at this is as you've traveled around uh, over 10 years, I've been going back and forth to China for about uh, that same amount of time, and I've noticed a big transformation. China's middle class is growing. It's uh, ma maturing, if you will. 
And this is something that China doesn't, doesn't have a legacy to. The middle class is pretty young, their right. 30s, 40s. So is there this demand for more entertainment from this growing middle class? I think that's a crucial point. Um, and actually, I think that audience development really has to be a kind of number one priority in this uh, so that audiences um, who, say, go to movies can, can, can choose once in a while to go see a musical or live theater. And, you know, in terms of how that audience development takes place, um, I think there are lots of different ways of doing it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think that's really crucial.